Hey everybody, and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 2nd of October. This morning, I am using the forward day by day for today's date. And the passage from scripture is Luke chapter 5, verse 27. It says, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. Much to our chagrin, perhaps, the invitation to follow Jesus is open to anyone. That's apparent in Jesus inviting Levi, a tax collector, to follow him. One thing the Israelites could all agree on was their distaste for Israelite tax collectors. At best, tax collectors were tra traitors to their people, history, culture, and heritage. Yet here was Jesus openly inviting Levi to be part of his inner circle and going to Levi's house for a party. I was once told that the best ability is availability. While many of us Christians try to add stipulations for church membership, the invitation to discipleship has no requirements but to be readily available and willing to follow Jesus. Perhaps then, rather than getting bogged down by pondering if we are qualified enough for Jesus' invitation, we make ourselves available and ask for courage to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. That's pretty powerful. I sometimes wonder, though, in this day and age, is it so much about do we recognize that we are eligible to follow Jesus, that we are humble enough in our, our souls to say, would Jesus even want me along for the ride? Or are we more as a society, Christian society, leaning toward determining that other people aren't eligible? I think it's a lot easier, if I'm honest with myself, to relate to the other people, the Pharisees and the scribes and those who were grumpy with Jesus about inviting the tax collector, than I am to relate to Levi or Matthew being the tax collector. I mean, that's a pretty, it takes a pretty hard look at your life to be able to say to yourself, you know what, on my own, I am really not worthy of following Jesus. Like, I'm not going to be helpful to the cause based on who I am. And the truth is, we're not. Based on who we are without Jesus' help, no matter how incredible we are, no matter what a great mechanic we might be, or orator, or poet, or painter, or hockey player we are, to follow Jesus, to actually be the kind of person that Jesus wants us to be, we are not able to do that on our own. And that's kind of the point, that we need Jesus to come alongside us and say, I'm going to teach you how. And that's what Jesus did with Levi or Matthew. He said, come and join me. He didn't say, because you have the right the right diploma on your wall, because you have the right answers to every question, because your IQ is the highest, because you are the most charismatic, then you can come and follow me. He simply looked at him and said, come and follow me. Even though he was the last person a lot of those disciples would want to have with them, Jesus said, follow me. Even though society would look down on Jesus and say, are you nuts? You're making yourself unclean. You're betraying your people. Jesus still looked at him and said, come and follow me. And he did. Do you have times in your life when you figure you're not worthy? Do you have times in your life when you realize, you know, you look in the mirror and think, who am I? I don't deserve that. I don't deserve this goodness thing, this the love that I have or the people in my life. I don't even deserve the job I have. But we probably all have moments like that. We probably all have moments of self-doubt. There's people who don't. There are people who just seem to have, well, maybe, maybe they do, they don't tell us, but they just seem to have this ability to just have complete confidence in everything they're doing. And it's all going to be good. The truth is, I think deep down, we all have that sense that there is something in us that's missing. We're just not going to, we're not going to match up. We're not going to be the person that God wants us to be. We're not good enough yet. And Jesus is like, that's the point. That's the point. The word yet. You're not yet. And you won't be if you don't start walking toward it. We become worthy of God's love, of Jesus' love, when we say to ourselves, I've been chosen, and I'm going to follow, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to stumble, and Jesus is going to pick me back up, or maybe somebody else is going to be picking me back up, and we're going to keep on trucking, and we're going to try, and I'm going to learn, I'm going to fail, I'm going to learn again, and maybe do better next time. But Jesus is not saying to us, you have to be perfect before you start. He's saying to you, I'll help you, help you become perfect. And perfect doesn't mean we get every right answer, that we have the perfect body, perfect job, or the perfect parents, the perfect spouse. Perfect means that we become who God is calling us to become. 
And that perfection may not come until we are meeting God face to face after this physical, temporal world realm has ended. But as long as we are following faithfully, trying hard to get to where God wants us to be, then we can go there. We can follow and we can realize that we have been chosen. We can realize that we have been chosen to follow, to be with Jesus, and to become the perfection of what we are called to become, eventually. But we need to not beat ourselves up if we aren't there yet, because we're not there yet. But neither was Matthew, Levi. He had to begin by being invited. We are all invited. Each and every one of us are invited. The question is, will we answer the invitation? And when we do, will we try to block others from answering the invitation? I hope the answer to the first one is yes, we will accept the invitation when we're invited. And two, no, we won't block other people's invitations because we don't know what God is doing in them. We don't know the incredible work that God has already begun in them that we can't see yet. And we need to trust that God is doing that work. We need to trust that. God is doing that work in you, I promise. Let him have at you. Let him have it. Let him work in you. Don't back off. Let him in. You'll be amazed at what you might see. God bless you. I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.